Hello guys, this is Rupesh and you are watching CPP Nuts video series on threading and this is a video specially for one of my Patreon because he had this question and wanted me to answer with a video. So I have tried to solve this thread synchronization problem for him. This is a typical problem where you will be given some strings like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so and so forth. And the point is, now you'll be given another number, maybe three, and this is the character counts you want to print. So let's say this is your character count, and this is going to be your thread count, okay? T, C. This is C, C, this is T, C. And this can be maybe two. So what this means, so this, is your string okay str so this is the whole problem you will be given three things string and a character count and thread count and you have to print if this is the situation you have to print three characters a b and c with thread one so as you have two threads it will be like t1 t2 t1 t2 t1 and T2. It will keep on going and then with this you have to print A, B, C and then D, E, F will be printed by another thread and then what is remaining? G. So G, A, B. G, A, B will go over another thread. So this is the whole problem. Then rest will go like C, D, E, like C, D, E will go for another thread, right? Then F, G and A will go for another thread and then B, C and D, this one will go for another thread. So like this, it will keep on going. And these parameters are changeable. You can change these parameters. So you can say that maybe instead of three, you can say four here, okay? And instead of two, you can say maybe five. So five different threads will try to print four characters. So how that is going to look like? So if it is five threads, then thread one will print a b c and d because we have four characters here okay so these are the new values and string is like same so a b c d and then e f g a e f g a will come next and then b c d e but here it will be thread three this is going to be thread four and this is going to be thread five okay and then e is done then we will have f g a b for next so f g a sorry uh, yeah a and b yeah so like this it will go so this is the task i think you would have understood the problem by now these parameters i mean these inputs are variables you can change them and it will go like this okay so this was the problem and this was really interesting problem so i thought of creating a video for this and it will help him also so this is the program we have this main function here we'll start from here we are expecting actually four parameters first would be your application name and rest are like first is your string second is going to be character count and third is going to be your thread count okay that's what i explained before now this is your class initialization like what is going to be the string how many characters you want to print per thread and how many threads you want to use right and then we'll do p dot run this is very important function which will actually start the job so let's go to this function so we got this function here we know the thread count we'll go for zero to that many count and we'll create a thread object and we'll put that into a threads list this is nothing but a vector okay so vector of threads that's it because i have to store them in a data structure so i'm using vector i have moved it because you cannot copy it likewise if i have thread count three i can create three different t which is thread object and i will move that thread object into this thread list so what is this guy doing here this is thread ids see whatever thread i am creating here i am just trying to put that id i mean threads id into this thread ids vector and the data type is vector of thread ids i'll tell you why i'm using this so we have a vector with thread ids get constructed and we have thread stored in vectors this is join this is fairly simple you will wait for those threads to complete you will not go ahead and kill yourself i mean you will not terminate the main thread okay we use join for that 
and that's it we have nothing here right now you might be thinking what happened we just created threads and we have pushed them into some vectors that's it yeah actually what happens the moment you create threads they start running they ask you what function you want to treat as a thread so i'm passing this print thread so if i have thread count is equal to three that means this print thread was called three times so where is this print thread here it is for different different threads okay so for thread zero for thread one and thread two all those thread will come here and trying to execute this function they will come inside this they will ask this wait for all thread in it this function is very important what i want to tell you is that i don't want to print all those messages until unless all the threads are created because maybe you might be giving input like maybe 50 threads 100 threads maybe 1000 threads i don't know that would support but my whole point is i won't start executing until unless all the threads are created so this wait for all threads in it is just for that so every thread will come here they'll try to execute this function for themselves and this is that function it is just checking if thread count so our thread count is 3 right and thread dot id is dot size so if this is not equal to thread dot id is or size meaning we are still not finished in this loop okay so once we are finished then only the size of thread id is going to be the thread count if this is true because this is infinite loop once it is true all will raise for this mutex lock any one of them will acquire this lock it can be zero it can be one it can be two doesn't matter but remember this our requirement is t0 should print a b and t1 should print c d and t2 should print remaining like e f and all that okay we will not allow first t1 to print something and then t0 no from here to here it is not allowed so somehow you need a mechanism to say that whether thread 0 will go ahead or thread 1 will go ahead or thread 2 will go ahead with the execution and this is the function where i'll handle that see this is condition variable wait i am telling you are not allowed to go further if this condition is false so this has to return true in order for you as a thread to go ahead and do the execution so let's suppose for understanding thread one happened to lock this mutex first and it came here and it was trying to execute this this dot thread id i mean this thread get id is equal to equal to thread id's allowed thread now allowed thread as we are coming here for the first time initially allowed thread was initialized as zero so you know from where to start right so zero is the start point so i am telling as i am starting please check whatever the thread have come for the first time is it the zeroth thread if it is not it will return false and that thread will unlock this mutex and will go into waiting or a blocked state so one came and once id let's suppose when i was constructing this array now this is the important point i told you right i will tell you like why i was creating this thread ids okay this thread ids will just assume initially we will have like threads zero thread id sorry zero thread meaning the first thread got constructed was holding id like cross zero one for simplicity and for thread one the id was cross zero two and for third one the id was cross zero three so these are the ids meaning the thread ids okay and i am storing these thread ids into vectors with zero one and two so if i ask you which one is the thread zero you will give me this id that's what it is right so now here i'm asking thread id's zeroth one it will show i mean give me this now i'll compare this with my current thread if it is equal meaning it is zeroth thread otherwise it is not so this is how i am maintaining this synchronization one after another one okay 
So as I told, one will come, I mean, one came first, one is having this thread ID. So it is like cross zero two is equal to equal to cross zero one. This is not equal, so it will return false. Next time, let's suppose zero came and it was like cross zero one is equal to equal to cross zero one. Yes, it is true. Once it is true, it will go ahead. Point to notice here is when you will go, you have to increment the allowed thread by one because if it is zeroth thread now, now you have to allow this thread, right? And this will happen in a loop. So automatically you are saying now my next thread should be allowed and then next thread and next thread. And that also you have to manage because it is also variable. So here I'm checking if my allowed thread after incrementing by chance it reaches to the thread count, then I have to make it point to zero back. Okay. Because after this two, I have to again tell thread zero to start execution. That's why I'm doing this. So this is for that. And then if next character, yeah, I missed one point. Yeah, here before doing this, we are actually going and printing the characters. Let's go to that function first. Now the printing part, this is the fun part, right? If we wanted this. So basically what I'm doing, I'm just allowed to print whatever the character count is there. Meaning if I'm allowed to print two characters per thread, this is for that. And why this for loop are like two times? Because it is possible that your number is like A, B, C, D, and E, and this is your string and your character count is also two and your thread count is also two. So these two, will go for T1, these two will go for T2, and then we have only E. So T1 again will come, right? So T1 has to print E and A, E and then A here, okay? So one character from here, and then you have to go back and then print this. And then next T2 will print this one, and then T1 will print this one. And then next T2 will print these two, T1 will print these two. Likewise, it will keep on going. So for that reason, we have this calculation. So let's look at the printing point. See here I am printing thread ID and this is the important point. I am proving here that this is the order we are following. Get current thread ID and I am passing whatever the thread is executing this function that thread ID I have passed here, get current thread ID. So this ID meaning the number, okay? Meaning I'm passing this and I want this because user won't be able to understand this, right? User understand this. So that conversion is happening somewhere here. Yeah, see, get current thread ID. I'm passing the ID and I'm iterating over that loop, that thread ID is loop, I mean vector, and I'm just simply checking if my thread ID is equal to the past ID, in that case, I'll just simply return thread ID, which is nothing but a variable. I keep incrementing this variable inside this loop. So this way I can get the number associated with that thread ID. So here I'll print thread ID 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. And then we have this column here, and then I will print this characters. So this is like next character I'm allowed to print. Initially, all these things will be at zeroth position. So this is at zeroth position and I have to check whether the string length is not exceeded and how many print I have already done. That should be less than my character's count, whatever the count is allowed. So I'm printing those characters. I'm just incrementing how many characters I have already printed. If that goes false, then in that case, I can just simply quit. And this condition is, I already explained, if only one character is printed and we were supposed to print this, and then after that we have to print A, right? So that we have taken care here. Because if we are coming out of this loop and print count is still less than character count, meaning some characters are still left. So that we are handling here. Once that is handled, we have to keep this next character updated because if you printed A and B this time, next time you have to start from this, right? So next character will be updated accordingly and then we'll print end line. 
So this will be printed like thread ID and then we'll be printing zero. Sorry, this column will come here and A and B. And then thread ID one, we will have C and D and it will keep on going. And this is where it is. This is infinite loop. It will keep on going and executing. What is left? We have this if condition. Yeah, notice this. This next character is equal to next character plus character count, meaning how many characters we have printed. It is possible that it will overshoot, meaning it will go out of this boundary because it is possible. So we have to bring that into in proper order. We have to bring that back to the proper character. We have to do this also because see, we are checking this next character is greater than or equal to current string length because after this addition, it is possible that it will go as an overflow. So we have to bring that in a range. So once we are done, we'll say unlock the mutex and notify to the all the threads. So let's consider our example. We printed for thread zero, right? And then it will notify all. So T1 and T2 will get notified and they both will try to come and try to acquire the log. Doesn't matter who is acquiring the log because we always have this condition to guard that allowed thread would be the next thread. Okay. So T1 is only going to get executed and then it will allow T2. So here the understanding part was this guy here. This condition variable is very important in threading. You can control which thread to sleep and which thread to go ahead if there is a race for the execution. So this is very important. So I'll execute and show you like how we should get the output. So if this is the string A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I and character count is 2, thread count is 2, then let's see the output. See we have this 0101 printing and it is printing so fast. Let me break it and I'll just put some delay here. So I have put this wait here for one second so that we can see it printing. Okay, so let's do this. See, it is printing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Stop this and let's see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, then I and then A, see? And it's just alternate thread. If you want to see, then we can see that it is like, it started with zero, see? And then one, zero, one, zero, one. So nowhere you will see zero, zero or one, one repeating. It's always zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Let me just change this a bit. Let's change for three threads. Then what if I hit enter? See, it is printing in pair of three, A, B, C, D, E. Let me just stop this otherwise. Yeah, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Then I, A, B, C, C. Everything is in order, zero, one, two. So I'll put this uh, delay code with this. If you don't want this delay, you can comment out, okay? I'm not sure this was a great implementation. Maybe there can be better implementation than this. I'll share the code in GitHub. Don't worry about that. And if I forgot to share, please let me know in the comment section. I'll do that. So with that being said, thanks for watching guys. Bye bye. Take care. I'll see you in the next videos. And don't forget to hit the like button guys. It will help me a lot. See you.